Recently here on the channel I built three PCs. One of them had a P7 P55D motherboard from ASUS. This is the LGA 1156 socket and it supports two Xeons in particular that are extremely good value for money. One coming in at $7, this is the X3430, and the other coming in at current market price of $18, and that's the X3440. These are readily available on the market, you can buy them from AliExpress, and they're overclockable, even with budget motherboards like H55s, which are also readily available for like $50. And so I was going back through the comments, and one of them said, why don't I compare the $18 CPU against the $7 CPU? And I thought to myself, that's a very good idea. I wish I'd read this sooner. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here today with a 780 Ti, which I believe, or at least in my experience, is one of the best value for money used graphics cards you can get on the market that delivers exceptional performance. So just how big of a difference is there between these two Xeons? Well, let's find out. So first things first with these little Xeons, we're actually going to be delitting both the X3430 and the X3440. And the reason being is this was actually the first generation or one of the first generations where Intel was putting thermal paste between the integrated heat spreader and the die. So yes, they were doing this long before Ivy Bridge. And it's even the same with the i7-860. But with that aside, let's get on to taking the lids off. Do you care about me cause you're lonely? Cause I'm the only one around You say you are better safe than sorry Cause you're too scared to hit the ground Might seem dark but you know that I'm honest So I just got a new vice and the first D-lit attempt it, it was successful, I mean the PCB's not harmed But the poor IHS did get a bit of a over crank so <laughs> now it's bent. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have ECC on board. So now our CPUs are all delitted and ready to overclock. I'm actually using a different board this time around the UD3P instead of the P7P55D as that could only go up to around 190 base clock. This, however, should go a little bit higher. I'm hoping it will, and that'll enable us to get four gigahertz. We're also using the Hyper 411R. Cooler Master sent this in as a budget CPU cooler. So we're gonna see how that performs with these four cores as well. So this, uh, this Cooler Master 411R, it actually won't fit this motherboard and that's mainly because the motherboard has this permanently attached back plate. So we can't bring up the screws in so it can attach. Otherwise, we have the replacement here anyway. So this is the VTG uh, AliExpress water cooler. This will actually fit, so we're gonna mount that now and use that for the test. Never let myself become a martyr. Won't let anybody pick me up. Thought I was in control, that I'd handle you. Turns out I am lost, don't know what to do. I feel like my head is underwater. Feel the pressure. So here we are now at conclusion time and the motherboard and the CPUs, how did they overclock? Well, the X3440 got to four gigahertz at 200 base clock. Any higher than that, even bumping the IMC and even bumping the CPU over generously, that still didn't allow it to get to 4.1 or even 4.2, for example. Uh, however, the temperatures were very controlled on both these delitted CPUs. Max was like 59 degrees and then over the X3430, that was like 58 degrees. So the temperatures were very controlled. And speaking of the X3430, managed to get that to four gigahertz as well. But keep in mind, the base clock was a little bit higher. It was 210 megahertz on the motherboard. And so this will enable the QPI speeds, for example, to be a little bit higher. And so you'll see in games, this does score a little bit of an advantage for the four core, four threaded CPU versus the more expensive four core, eight threaded CPU. Now for the graphics card, we're using the GTX 780 Ti. This is clocked with an overclock of 116 megahertz on the core, 326 megahertz on the memory. Uh, now I did set the fan speeds to 100% just to weed out any variants as well. And pulling up the first benchmark here, Cinebench, we'll just quickly get this out the way with 612 CB on the X3440 multi-threaded test and 121 on the single thread versus the X3430s. 462 and 121, so scoring identical on single thread. Moving over to the Dota 2, average FPS 188 versus 192, 0.1% lower 44 versus 36, 
1% low of 73 versus 76. So they scored pretty much neck and neck in Dota 2, and there actually is a bit of variance in this benchmark itself. Move over to The Witcher 3, 60 FPS cap on this game, low settings at 1080p. We managed to score 60 average FPS on both these CPUs. 43 versus 45 on the 1% lows and 16 versus 17. So the 0.1% lows, this game just has some inherent stuttering. It's a really bad game in my opinion to benchmark. I might drop it from the benchmark catalog. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Moving over to CSGO, however, this is a game where the X3430 scored a victory, 285 average FPS versus 270. And the 0.1% lows and 1% lows were virtually identical here. So this game, I believe it scored the victory for the uh, four core, four threaded CPU, the cheaper variant, because of that CPU uh, and motherboard higher base clock overclock of 210 versus 200. The memory speeds on the DDR3, that was 1600 megahertz, 99928, and it was a little bit higher on the X3430. Uh, due to that 10 extra megahertz on the base clock. However, moving over to Far Cry 5. Intensive game, 78 average FPS on the X3440 versus 79 on the X3430, 68 versus 69. So basically the same, X3430 did just edge it out slightly, did test this multiple times as well. And since it is a pre-canned benchmark, you're gonna get the same benchmark apples to apples every time. And then moving to the last game here, we've got Project Cars 2. Did a couple of runs here on a custom map. 98 average FPS versus 96, 78 versus 67, 74 versus 48. So the X3440 in this benchmark, I believe scored the victory, especially with the 0.1% lows. Did run a little bit smoother. Uh, so that's maybe a benefit of it using more cores and more threads. I did notice in Project Cars 2, it was utilizing those cores, those four cores, four threads on the X3430 near 100% too. So basically when you look at it, there wasn't a big difference between these two CPUs. Uh, one's like literally coming close to seven bucks, the other's coming close to eight bucks. Uh, but one does have a little bit more potential than the other, and that's the X3440. Uh, but if all you're doing is coupling it with a graphics card that gets a fire strike score under 10,000 points, for example, say a 7870 or a GTX 1050 or a 1050 Ti even, then something like the X3430 is still so relevant, especially if you're on a budget and those $10 matter to you. X3440, however, does have a bit more potential, but the reason I coupled it with a 780 Ti here today is because I believe it's like one of the most higher end graphics cards that you would want to couple with a CPU this cheap. For instance, I wouldn't recommend anyone couple a GTX 1080 or a GTX 1080 Ti with the likes of an $18 CPU. I mean, if you're gonna spend $500 plus on a graphics card, please do yourself a favor and spend a little bit more on your CPU. Uh, but in terms of the 612 Cinebench score, that's getting awfully close to an i7-3770, for example. So you can see that the potential of these old Xeons, especially their price point, and especially given that you can pick up a cheap H55 or a cheap P55 motherboard, just shows you how good of a value for money CPU these old things really are, and they can still get up and boogie. Now as for the D-Lid, I used the lid off an i3-530, uh, that surprisingly was thermal paste on one side and soldered on the other. Don't really know what's going on there, but I pulled that apart and it was really cool to see because I then am using that lid now on the X3430 and it's working absolutely fine. I do recommend de-lidding these CPUs and you will get a temperature drop of 10 degrees plus. As in the previous video, I had a non-de-lidded X3440 that was scoring close to 70 degrees and that was only at 3.8 gigahertz. So we're pumping more voltage, we're pumping higher speeds and we're not even getting over 60 degrees. So very good CPUs, even to this date. Though of course the question is still out there, what CPU would I pick out of the X3430 and the X3440? Honestly, it just really depends on your budget. I buy both these CPUs and I buy a lot of them because they're both really good value for money. I'd say, as I said before, if you're going with a lower end graphics card, X3430 is gonna be absolutely fine. Save yourself a few bucks. But if you're going with like a 780 Ti or even an R9 290X, and you still wanna save money, X3440 or even the X3460 or X3470 are both really good choices. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below if you got any questions about either of these little baby Xeons. I love them both, and I love you guys, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. And then we've got 68. So here we are right here with the rig The previous video that was uh, only. <laughs>